Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show. Good evening, New Orleans, and welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Uh, again, tonight, uh, we're looking forward to talking a little bit about the Saints, the LSU Tigers, the Tulane Green Wave, and your New Orleans Pelicans. And, of course, got a great panel for you, as always. Uh, Garland Gillen of Fox 8 Sports and Robert O'Shields of ABC 26 Sports. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being with us. Well, we got a lot to cover over the uh, next hour. We'll, uh, we'll go to the phone calls about halfway through the show, and we'll go ahead and we'll alert you when the, when the uh, phone number comes up. You can go ahead and give us a call. Guys, we always like to start off telling folks a little bit about what's going on at your respective um, stations. Garland, why don't you start off? Tell us about all the great programming you guys have. Well, this is probably the biggest, biggest time of the year for us because the Pelicans have started now. Uh, LSU, the Saints are in the middle of their seasons. LSU's got a game next week that could possibly decide the SEC West and if, who's going to be going to possibly the international semifinals. So, uh, you know, high school football is getting to the playoffs. This is the crazy time right now. So, uh, you know, got game plan tonight at 1035 to get you ready for Saints-Giants uh, on Sunday. And uh, tomorrow night uh, we got prep football on Fox 8 Football Friday. And then we all wrap it up on Sunday night with final play. So uh, it's another huge week at the stations nonstop till January. Yes. Robert, you guys are doing the same thing. That's right. Apparently we got a coach named JT Curtis. He's yes. got a big game this week. Yes. Friday night football, Ed Daniels, JT Curtis. And, of course, uh, Rummel Curtis. And that's what we're going on. We'll be previewing that game and um, showing you highlights all Friday night. Well, let's uh, before we jump into Saints, LSU, Tulane, Pelicans, it's a little high school because both you guys cover high school extensively. First of all, um, talk about the big game this week, Rummel Curtis. Yeah, Chase Forcade, uh, senior. Strong offense, defense. Christian mm -hmm. Fulton, one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Briston Gidry on the defensive line. Uh, this is for the district championship. I cannot believe Curtis and Rumble never played each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you Google map it, they're probably like, what, 10 miles yeah. apart? They never played each other. So there's a lot on the line. The only problem is now in the select, non select system. They play each other this week. They're going to play each other again, possibly in the semifinals or state finals. The, the system's a mess right now with the public versus private school. But uh, enjoy it. They moved it up to, to 11 a.m. instead of 2 o'clock because of uh, the bad weather coming in. Uh, I'm really excited about this game. I'll be out there uh, checking it out. And, you know, that night, Pelicans, Warriors. Mm -hmm. But in the daytime, we got 11 a.m. kickoff. Yeah. How about, how about you, uh, Robert? Well, yeah, it's going to be Rummel Curtis. But, you know, the thing is, this reminds me of Rummel St. Aug. It was big, hyped up. This is when Leonard Fournette was playing. Yeah. And guess what? They played each other again in the playoffs. Right. Uh, this thing, same thing's going to happen with Rummel Curtis. And in talking to the players and coaches this week, when I went out there, Chase 4K was like, listen, yeah, we play him Saturday. But you know what? We play him in two or three weeks later yes. in the playoffs. Same thing with Coach JT. He talked to us. Mm -hmm. He said the same thing. So he's trying to prepare their guys like, listen, this possibly will not be the last, next, the last time we play each other. Yes. We're going to play them again. And who knows? It may be uh, uh, the winner goes to the Dome. Yeah, that would be, which would be great. Guys, you, both your stations do a great job with high school football. And congratulations. Um, Saints got a big win over Indianapolis. Uh, they're now three and four. They're winner of back-to-back -back games. They're two and one so far in the second quarter. You know, at the risk of being redundant for those that watch the TV show regularly and listen to the regular show, uh, the radio show regularly. Uh, I've said it all along. You got to take it a game at a time, a quarter at a time. And Garland, we'll start with you. Talk about this this little bit of a sea change for the Saints right now. Yeah, when they were one and four, I was uh, I thought they were gonna beat the Falcons, go two and four. But I, I was not in a, a agreement with a small group of the population that said that the Saints were gonna win at Indianapolis. I thought Indianapolis looked strong against New England Patriots, and I thought the Saints were gonna struggle. They they proved this all wrong. Uh, the guessing game, I guess, is tough when you're picking in the NFL from one week to the next. So they're three and four right now. And I have no doubt that they can they can win on Saturday, and then they can beat the Titans next week. It'd be five and four, and then they can go to Washington and be six and four for the bye week. I know it's crazy to say, but the defense is finally getting healthy, uh, except for Keenan Lewis and maybe Donnell Elby will be out this week. But uh, Jarris Bird's finally healthy. I mean, that that that's a big deal. And yes. Delvin Bro. I mean, CFL, AFL, <laughs> I mean, you name it, indoor professional football right. league, he play, he's played in every league possible. He is a big-time star uh, going up for the Saints uh, going forward. 
Uh, I'm very impressed with what Delvin Bro has done. Yes, he had uh, a few slip-ups against T.Y. Hilton. Sure. That's going to happen when you put yourself out on an island. But uh, I really like – I mean, I don't want to talk about the offense that much because we know Drew Brees yes. and those guys are about – offensive line had one of their strongest games of the year. They're finally all healthy. Uh, this team is finally getting to where they need to be, and it's all about health. You see what happens with the Pelicans. I know we'll talk about them later. But when you got nine guys, you have a lot of injuries, that can really kill your team. Right now, the Saints are finally getting healthy, and uh, it's showing with the record. They're starting to move in the uh, up position. Yeah. Rob, what can you add? Well, and also, you have to think about their schedule. It's perfect timing mm -hmm. because the second half of their schedule, they've got an easy schedule. Jacksonville. Tennessee Titans. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that you have to worry about are those divisional games. Mm -hmm. So it sets up perfectly that the second half of the season can calculate into wins and looks like we can, they can go to the playoffs. Right. Well, I'll tell you what. That is a long way from where they were when the season <laughs> starts. I'm still going to be cautiously optimistic and go game by game on this team. But I see what you guys see. You see a defense that's flying around. You see an offensive line now that's back. You see the ability, at least last week, to run the ball consistently. Uh, you know, you'd like to see a little bit more out of the, out of the receiving core. You know, uh, you'd like to see a little bit more out of C.J. Spiller. We'll get into that a little bit later. But the defense is flying around. And, you know, Robert, since the um, – really since maybe game two, We've seen maybe a little bit of a change, a little back to the future uh, with, um, with Sean Payton. A much more aggressive style. Uh, offensively, defensively, special teams. Uh, it's almost like, you know, they were, they were losing and it was like, you know what? Heck with it. We're going to go out. We're going to go out aggressive. Uh, have you seen the same thing? I've seen the same thing. I even uh, remember my buddies even texting me like, and a lot of people kind of mentioned this. I think Sean shouldn't be calling the offensive plays, right. should, you know, like or you know, coach, you know that flip card, flip it on the other side. Let's run some other mm -hmm. things. But um, I think Pay Sean Payton and them have have kept to their system and what they are familiar with, and maybe threw a little things out there. In fact, the fake field goal last week kind of reminded me of the LSU game. Mm -hmm. I think maybe Sean and them may have yeah. saw like, hey, LSU, it worked with LSU. Let's try something like that. You know that I think they are starting to just say, hey, telling people calm down, we've got everything under control, let's just do our thing and see what happens. What about the the, uh, the change for a, a really kind of an aggressive game plan going forward? I love the Falcons game, fourth oh, yeah. and goal, they Come went on. for a touchdown yeah. against, and Benjamin Watson mm -hmm. scored one. Uh, yeah, I like I like the that that's, that was what made Sean Payton uh, a big time star in 2006 mm -hmm. and in 2009 when they won a Super Bowl. Roll the dice, onside kicks, mm -hmm. uh, the begin the third quarter uh, in Miami against Indianapolis. Those are the kind of plays that that put Sean Payton on the map. That's where you need to go to. That's the well. Uh, fourth and one. Let's not punt it. Let's let's push it in there. Let's yeah. go for it. And I tell you when that, that Falcons game is, is where it, it all started to lay out that this is a different team. And uh, you know what? It, yes, they're gonna have to go to Atlanta, which is gonna be a tough, uh, a tough test. But at least they get Carolina at home. Uh, the Bucks are probably gonna be fizzled out by then, so you, you could definitely uh, pull some wins there. So the back end of the schedule is looking uh, a little more ripe for victories. But you gotta like, if you're a Saints fan, uh, I know that a lot of things have to happen with the other, these other wild card teams. Yes. Because the Falcons or Panthers are probably gonna grab mm -hmm. one of those spots. So you definitely have to watch a team like the Seahawks right now to get that second spot. Right. It's amazing, uh, Robert, when you look at the beginning of the season. And again, look, we're, we haven't got through the second quarter yet. But if, if you're you're looking forward and you're looking at the schedule and you're saying, well, maybe the Saints have a have a have a puncher's chance going forward. Uh, there were a lot of lot, lot of uh, uh, folks who were saying that. The Saints were in the worst division in the NFL. And if you look right now at, at Atlanta and, and the Carolina, obviously playing pretty good football, and the Saints seem to be on the right track. That's right. When I was looking at the schedule and, and looking at the teams that are out there, I was like, well, looks like it's going to be the West. It'll be the tough one to play. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, it's like a complete role reversal. San Francisco is right. just terrible. I watched that game last week, and I'm like, the 49ers is struggling this bad. Seahawks are struggling just to get wins now. And you see Carolina, Atlanta, and then now the Saints try, is dominating. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones that are pushing. And the NFC South looks like it's going to be where it's at. Right. The running game uh, appeared 36 times. They ran it 183 yards against, against Indianapolis. 14 carries, 143 yards for, for Mark Ingram. Uh, is that something you think can carry forward week to week? It's been a big problem for this team uh, establishing the, the, the running the football. They run, they've run it. They just haven't established the run. Well, it also helped that they got up big. They True. got some. They got some opportunistic mm -hmm. plays with a uh, fumble recovery on a on a kick return. Uh, yeah, the, the run game. Well, it also helps that the offensive line is all healthy. Getting Teron Armstead back was big. Tim Lim, Tim Alito, the entire offensive line's fine. 
I guess it doesn't matter right now. Andres Pete probably not going to play again this week when you got those kind of dominant players. You know, go back to another thing. Uh, we're talking about the uh, NFC South being uh, so weak last year and be strong. Mm-hmm. It's like just it just flipped from conference there. AFC South is is like completely garbage yep, now. Right. I mean the Colts, Jaguars. Mm-hmm. Now check that. They've always been Jaguars, Titans. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the Colts have always been the class of the yes. league. But that division, the standings up and down looks atrocious. You go through there, but it's good to see that the NFC South is not the punching bag because last year was 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 some pretty bad records and yeah. the Saints were in it to the entire end with the record they had and you know it's gonna be tough getting in there in the playoffs because you're gonna have the Panthers and Falcons mm-hmm. they're gonna it looks like they're gonna run away with it right now right uh, Robert your thoughts on the running game running game seems solid I mean Mark Ingram starting to see Mark Ingram kind of push and hopefully I'm waiting for him to get that one big just mm-hmm. some jolt run for it but you have a guy like CJ Spiller a guy that's versatile that you can hand the ball off to or throw it out to in that mm-hmm. Cowboys game in overtime. So uh, it was a good move for to have him back there as well to help Mark, even if Mark needs a breather, vice versa. If yes. one of them needs a breather, you've always got a strong back. Now the, the question is, can we keep them both healthy? Because mm-hmm. remember a couple of years ago, that was our problem. We didn't even have, I don't think, one good back. Maybe Chris Ivory yes. <laughs> may have been one well, they year. They were bringing guys on the street. Right. Yeah. So that's the that's the main question with this team with those with with the running back yeah keep it going, right. but let's try to keep them healthy along the way. You know Spiller is is an enigma here because in the past well, man you give Peyton a, a player like Spiller who can be a dynamic playmaker and he's finding ways to be able to get him uh, isolated get him the football. I mean we've seen it with Sproles we've seen it with Bush haven't really seen it with Spiller they've almost. Uh, you know, I've just been struggling to find a way to get him the football. Yeah, and you know, going into the uh, regular season, uh, some of my friends have mentioned to me that the Saints should not sign anybody from the Buffalo Bills ever again in free agency. Yeah. But now Jarris Bird's healthy, mm-hmm. and, and now CJ Spiller is healthy, and now he's getting a lot more runs. He's getting uh, passes out the backfield. Uh, Spiller, uh, the first games he was back, you know, Sean said when he get ball to him more, you know, he wasn't getting enough. Now he's now he's finally getting to the frame, and uh, uh, Kyrie Robinson getting his carries too. This is dangerous now because the the receiving core isn't the strongest in the NFL. There's just no way around it with when Willie Sneed's one of your top receivers. I just, you know, he didn't do it in the past for other teams. And uh, to have him as like one of your star receivers, that shows you have a weakness at the receiver yes. spot. But Brandon Cooks made some big plays. Colston only made one catch, but it was right. it was a big one. Right. So, uh, you know, the receiving core, um, kind of a little lower, but the, the running back core is starting to go up higher. I agree. I mean, the receiver core, we haven't seen that with Colston. I'm right. waiting for Colston. Right. Waiting for that. But, but he's yeah, he has he's had a rough year. Yes. Um, could this he may be a year or two late? I mean, later. That's it. Mm-hmm. This, this year, next year for him? I don't know. But probably, in my opinion, this year. I mean, yeah. I think it is. I mean, when you look at his at the cap or everything else next year, I just think almost they they're almost in a position where they're going to have to cut bait at some point. I mean, there's, mm-hmm. a, there's quite a few veteran players that won't be here next year just simply as they're turning this roster over simply because they're not going to be able to afford them. I mean, mm-hmm. I think Colson is going to be one of those guys. Uh, they have augmented that a little bit with the tight end position, though. Right. I mean, they've gotten um, – I'm, I'm going to screw up his name. Michael <laughs> H. I'm just right. going to keep it that way. Um, they got him from New England, and, and he seems to be – I mean – he has, has more catches and receptions mm-hmm. than Josh Hill, who's been on the team since right. the beginning. So, um, with them and Brandon Watson, I mean uh, Benjamin Watson, excuse me. A bit, it the tight end position, you almost think about like, well, right. do we really do we really need Jimmy Graham? Right. I mean, look at what he's doing right now for Seattle. Yeah, yeah, not, yeah well, he's lost. He is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hua Wanamanui. I think that's how we say it, right? <laughs> That's that was pretty a, good. I'll, I'll give it a shot there. Yeah, I, I was all when, when Kakaha got signed with the Saints. I yeah. was like, oh boy, yeah. I had to practice that one for <laughs> a little while. Me too, while. for a long time. I was I was doing the practicing last night on Hua Wanamanui, and you know we'll see if it, we got it. Defense is where we've seen the big change, though. Young players kind of coming into the room, uh, getting to the position you know, to a point where they they can react and not think. In some cases, we finally started to see Rob Ryan start to maybe do what Rob Ryan has done in the past with veteran teams. Mixing up the defenses a little bit, maybe some exotic looks, going from zone to man to man. We saw that consistently. Um, and now, finally, a pass rush. A lot of that has to do, in, in, in my opinion, with, again, guys that are growing. You know, the Tyler Davidson, the Stephon Anthony, the uh, uh, Hiloi Kakahas, uh, those, those type of guys. You know, you go right down the line. You mentioned Devin Bro. Uh, the, 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 to me, that's the reason why you're starting to see this defense maybe come together a little bit. Now, week to week, 
you never know. Blown assignment here, penalties there. I mean, you can be right back where you started from. But we're seeing at least a, a, a maturation of, of the defense right now. And Cam Jordan's finally showing that he's worth that contract. He's getting some sacks finally. They're getting back. To, you're getting the backfield. This is a totally different defense. I mean, Rob Ryan definitely had to feel like he was on the hot seat at one and four. I mean, everybody's been gunning for him the last few, uh, the last last year into this year. You know, especially with Dennis Allen's mm -hmm. breathing down your neck. But he's responding these last few weeks. That defensive line. Uh, is sent to jolt into this team. Uh, it's good to see Cam Jordan finally getting uh, worthwhile in that money. And then Stephon Anthony, what a great interception against mm -hmm. Andrew Luck. Uh, Kakaha, special teams and linebacker. Uh, he's getting in there and getting some sacks. And it always helps with the defensive backfield. If you can hold the receivers uh, in the defensive backfield, then then that can get the uh, the defensive lineman a little extra time to yes. get there and rock the quarterback. Right. You know what, Robert? Uh, Week before, we saw the NASCAR package more and, and, and allowed, obviously, um, Jordan to be able to get to the quarterback. Last week, we saw just a mix of it. Sometimes he was on the end, sometimes he was inside, and they were still able to get pressure. That's right, and I think that's what Rob Ryan's trying to do now, what Garland was saying, was just trying to mix them up, trying to get them in there, and get to the quarterback. Because I think that was the problem in the beginning of the year, where a lot of people were like, all right, Rob Ryan's got to go. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. To the full point, no I'm pretty sure there was websites already oh, yeah. created with wanting it. him fired. But he, I guess him and Dennis Allen may have finally sat down and said, listen, we got to change this up. Maybe Sean Payton been, was mm -hmm. part of that interview uh, meeting and said, listen, we got to change this up. And you kind of saw those different packages, different schemes, different stunts um, we saw in the past two weeks. And I think that was the Atlanta game. We saw those big changes happen and people were taking yeah. notice. Yeah, no doubt. And, and guys, of course, on the outside, missing Kenneth Lewis is huge. But as you mentioned, Devin Rose played well. They got to kind of find a, a niche for, for Brandon Brown. And we've seen him more on the inside at times, which is, I think, where this part of his career, where he's going to be. Damian Swan comes back this yes, week. But, yes, I mean, big. Kyle Wilson played well last week. But they had the guy, uh, Keem Davis, comes in. He plays well last week. All of a sudden, again, you've got a defensive backfield that, at least right now, at least for last game, playing very well. And it's good to see people make interceptions. Even when they got smoked against mm -hmm. the Philadelphia Eagles, it was nice to see, uh, you know, finally Brandon Browners getting some heat taken off of him. Uh, you get an interception from Bro. Uh, Kenny Vaccaro, always solid. Jarris Bird's healthy. You, you really got to like what this defensive backfield is doing for the Saints going forward because it's been a weakness. Last yes. year, I mean, the days of Corey White and P. Rob are over oh. with. I'm, I'm glad to say I don't talk about Patrick Robinson mm -hmm. anymore. But yeah, Damian Swan's back this week. He's out of the concussion protocol program, so he's going to play this week. Uh, you got to like the Saints' chances this week. I don't know what the spread's like. Three points this week. Uh, the Saints are favored. Uh, it's going to be a big test. Going yep. against Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, yeah. this week. Uh, Eli Manning's looking back to his elite level status right. there. So. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's going to be a big weekend uh, in New Orleans for sports. Yeah, they'll be tested by those old LSU receivers, won't they? Well, yeah, and then, the, you know, the next two weeks, right. you're, you're at home, so you're not traveling. So that's a that's a positive if you have to look at anything. So, yeah, I guess the Giants, it's kind of, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for Sunday to be here. Right. Well, of course, <laughs> it starts with Saturday with a big game, but my, Sunday. My guess is, Robert, they, they're going to put Bro on, on Odell Beckham, more than likely, you would yeah, think, huh? Yeah, I would think so. And, I think and, so. And whoever the other corner is going to be will obviously take uh, Reuben Randall. At yeah, Reuben point. Reuben's been struggling this right. year. Though. He's had a lot of drops, mm -hmm. but uh, the tight end position's been doing uh, very well for the Giants. Luckily, Victor Cruz isn't back yet, yes. and he hasn't. I think Victor and Odell have only played like uh, uh, one game together mm -hmm. since they've since uh, they've been with the Giants there. So Odell's not even having the season he had last. He's having right. a good season, but yes. not his. You know, at least he's staying healthy now. Boy, the overall last week the defense 73 yards held held the Indy to 73 yards rushing. They had four sacks, three tackles for losses, ten quarterback hits. What a big change we've seen from week one and two to last week and even the week before against Atlanta. That's right. I mean, if you were a fantasy football fanatic you would not pick the Saints defense right. in the beginning of the year no <laughs> I way. mean you would get killed each week but I think this week I mean you might want to trade up and get them or, or what have you because I mean the defense is solid they're starting to come together and, and again they've all season long they played pretty well on third down yeah and that's they, been one of the strengths yeah they uh they're in, I, I'm not used to word maybe I should wear it's intimidating now but they're starting to get in, in in quarterbacks heads now Andrew look I mean his first completion was in the second quarter yeah. that's unheard of uh, yes, they made a big run at the end of the game. Um, we, we mentioned uh, Bro having some uh, problems with his footing, and T.Y. Hilton burned him. But uh, 
complimentary football. The offense is starting to play, uh, is playing stronger. Drew Brees, uh, he's still not worn down. I know people say his arm's not what he used to be. That pass to Brandon Cooks on the on the uh, the uh, the, um, the series before, yes. which we thought might be the end of the game, but it wasn't. Uh, but then he hit Colston on the back shoulder fade. Uh, they definitely have it going on offense, a run game, passing game. Just get, just get uh, Hill more involved. Mm-hmm. I mean, Benjamin Watson looked like a stud during yeah. training camp. We knew he was going to have a strong year. I know his numbers are very close to what uh, Jimmy Graham's numbers are right now. I know Jimmy's in a totally different system now where he blocks a little more, so sure. it's kind of hard to, to, to read the uh, stats. But uh, you definitely got to like where the Saints are at on both sides of the ball. You know, and, and uh, again, when you look at, at from a defensive standpoint, uh, the ability to put pressure on the passer again which you mentioned you guys mentioned goes hand in hand with getting a lead this team's gotten a lead now all of a sudden a whole different mindset for the defense that's right and you and, and um, when you when the Saints get a lead that the defense sh- it seems like they're they perform and they want to keep that lead because the last time when they didn't have the lead it yeah. was like going to a high school game mm-hmm. and these kids even though it says 14 7 they think they're down by 45 points right. and it just seems down it, it felt like it at times mm-hmm. though the offense couldn't get anything generated defensively you weren't seeing the turnovers that we're seeing you weren't I mean you couldn't even get to, to the passer at some point I mean it was almost like always a step behind now you get a little bit of a lead team gets kind of turned up on the defensive side of the ball all of a sudden the offensive selection playbook opens up a little bit more and, and we, we start to see what a lot of people thought we would have seen you know a few years ago with the old Saints you know I'm not gonna say that they're having a prolific offense like they once had but again they, they seem to move down the, down the field when they needed to uh, in the last couple games guys um, I'm cautiously optimistic going forward this is a team that every week uh, I don't think you know what you're going to get because they're so young you got a 50% turnover the roster you got so many young players that, that are kind of growing on the job here uh, Garland, your, your thoughts going forward? I know you guys have talked a little bit about playoffs, but I mean, we saw last week you get a big lead. They've never been in that position before. They were able to hold on and win. I mean, uh, to me, every single game is a learning experience. Yeah, I mean, they lost to the Bucks at the beginning of the season. The Bucks are not a good team. That that, that one's still like just you, you oh, know, yeah. there's there's a game per year like where you just like what happened in the game. Like last year when they destroyed the Packers on Monday night, mm-hmm. I thought the Packers were like going to come in there and just you know blow the doors off the Saints, but the Saints destroyed them in that game. It was the same thing with this year with the Bucks game. I mean, that one, just, they were 10-point favorites. I'm sure it destroyed everybody's Survivor League. I had the Saints in that Survivor <laughs> League, so I got knocked out there. So that, that one blew me away. So it, 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 you, you, tried, you, you thought the team was done with. He, the stories are already out there. Is Sean Payton going to go to USC? Sure. Is he going to go to Texas? Or is he going to go to the Miami or, or Indianapolis? Mm-hmm. Uh, those have kind of calmed down for for a time being. So uh, it, it seems like everybody's getting confidence out there on Airline Drive. The sound bites sound a little more confident there. Uh, no one's turned back on any of the players there. Um, you got to you got to like at least to have a positive attitude right now because when you're you're 0 three, everybody's coming for blood. You know all the scenarios of trade Drew Brees away to the Houston Texans and trade Sean Payton away to the, the Miami Dolphins. Those have kind of died down for a little while, and. Um, the schedule looks good right. going forward. I, you know what? They could be a playoff team, but you definitely got to see what's going to happen with some of those other wild card teams. Both you guys were at training camp. Uh, did you walk away from training camp feeling that the coaching staff had a lot of confidence in this team? Or were they kind of in a situation where we really don't know what we have yet? I think we're just, uh, first off, we were limited to access. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, um, I guess, it, it, I don't know. Training camp to me, it's almost like preseason football. It's the mm-hmm. same thing. It's the same over and over. There's a s- certain drills that you kind of you you can weed out who's the tough one, mm-hmm. who's the weak one. But I think it's just the just the same routine, routine. We you you don't know until you actually play somebody yes. that's not in a black and gold uniform mm-hmm. because True. those guys aren't full force. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't think I don't think they I, I think they were confident that they mm-hmm. have a good team, but I don't. I didn't know it was going to be this way. Right. Yeah, last year we thought they were going to go to the Super Bowl. Well, everybody so the, did. Yeah, so this year I, I got I went to training camp and I'm like, you know what? I'm not making any predictions mm-hmm. because right. I didn't know what we were going to get. We were so all in on the Saints in, in 2014. Well, how could you not have been, though? Right. But all the national prognosticators right. also said the Saints are going to make, make it to the Super Bowl. Uh, I thought at the beginning of the year, I thought the Saints were going to go 9-7. and seven. And but that was uh, and make the playoffs because I thought the NFC South was gonna be pretty weak mm-hmm. again this year. When when Carolina lost Kelvin Benjamin, I was like, who's he gonna throw to right. this year? And now he's throwing to Greg Olson like crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're undefeated right now. You, you gotta be kidding me with the Carolina Panthers and the Falcons. They keep getting wins. They they host the Bucks mm-hmm. uh, this Sunday. 
Th those records going to keep stacking up six and zero, seven and zero. The Falcons will be six and one. Mm -hmm. So the Saints got to keep keep this this train moving because um, the, the NFC South is no joke. I mean, the Bucks had a pretty uh, embarrassing loss to be down what to be up twenty three points against the Redskins and lost that game. So we finally know what the Bucks are. Uh, hopefully the Saints, when they go down to Tampa, can definitely get that that win back that yes. they they lost in the Superdome. You know, guys, I, I walked away from from watching them in preseason thinking that, that that the coaching staff didn't know what they had one way or the other. So mm -hmm. much a large turnover in the roster, uh, some injuries to start the season off. That that again, they didn't know if these young guys were going to come together quickly. They have come together fairly quickly. I mean, you're in the second quarter of the season right now, and they come together. Now they got to stay away from injuries, and we got to. And these young players have to continue to mature. If they do, if they if they do that, I think they got a puncher's chance to be able to do what you guys are talking about. Maybe get in a situation where they can get back into this and, and maybe make a run at the playoffs. But I, but again, I think there's a lot of ifs out there because I think there's so many young players on this team. You don't know what you're going to get week to week. You just don't. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, you thought that Kakaha, you're, you were worried that Kakaha and Stefan Anthony were going to start right away, but uh, they've come in. That, that draft class is pretty strong this oh, year. Yes. I know we've been we've been destroying some of these past draft classes, especially 2012 is gone. With, with good reason. Yeah, I mean, I mean, going back to 07. I mean, Akeem Hicks, you know, he, he was the last of the, the 2012 right. class. He's gone. He's now with New England doing nothing right now for the Patriots, which is kind of hard to break into mm -hmm. that team anyway. I'm not going to down on that. But uh, this this offense, I mean, I mean this defense. Even P.J. Williams, we thought uh, had a strong training right. camp. He could have been something if he didn't get injured. But Davis Tall looked good, even though he's mm -hmm. had injuries. They they uh, they struck it rich with that that uh, that, that draft. I will say this so Andres Pete, he's gonna have some. Uh, he's gonna have a tough learning curve there. You know, he struggled this year. He's yeah. probably gonna be what out four games. Mm -hmm. He's already what week two will be out this week. But. Uh, so that might be the one that we're still. He's going to be, be a work in progress, but he's, uh, to me, I think he's got he's got to get stronger. Once he gets stronger, he'll get a chance, but like again, as Zach Street did, to kind of learn on the job a bit, and then uh, I think he can have a fine career. Now, you know, was he going to be worth that pick when it's all said and done? Yeah. Uh, we, we don't know. We don't know. You know, but again, you go back to just you know a couple years ago, we got OBJ coming in this week, and you know, I mean, you look back and you trade up for Brandon Cooks, you know, you give up a little bit more considering you you drafted Stanley Jean Baptiste in the second round. Was a bad one. Maybe OBJ's here, and you know you've got that dynamic playmaker that you that you really still are, are missing. Um, let's take a quick break. We come back. We'll, we'll, we'll take some phone calls. We'll put the phone lines at 866-3200. Also, we'll get into some Pelicans talk. We'll talk about the Tigers. Hopefully, we'll have some time to get the two lane as well. You're watching Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host Eric Asher. Garland Gillen of Fox 8 Sports. Robert O'Shields of ABC 26 Sports are our guests tonight. We'll be right back. Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is underwritten by... Located on Lake Pontchartrain, Brisby's Lakefront Restaurant and Bar offers traditional West End favorites, a scenic view, oysters, and numerous tasty options. More information is available at 504-304-4125 or brisbysrestaurant.com. Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House has been shocking here since 1979. Located at 3117 21st Street in Metairie, Mr. Ed's Oyster Bar and Fish House offers raw, fried, and grilled oysters as well as a range of Cajun and Creole dishes. Enjoy a dozen with a smile. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. Welcome back to Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Derek Asher. Garland Gillen and Robert O'Shields are our guests tonight. 866-3200 if you'd like to get involved in the program. Phone lines are now open. Guys, we're going to shift to the Pelicans. We'll go back to the Saints uh, if the callers want to go in that direction. Before we do, you mentioned earlier when you walked in, we were in the green room. Saints made made a move today. Yeah, they got Jolon Dunbar back, who was on the, uh, the 2009 uh, Super Bowl championship team. He was a starter. He got released by the Rams on Tuesday, and he's back. Because I think they, the, the Saints, if you look at the injury report, if you read into it, Hawthorne's going to be out this week, and Danelle Elbery hasn't practiced this week. So, Jolon Dunbar, I don't know what he's going to give you. He, he's been in the system before, though. Yeah. So, he knows, we, well, uh, obviously it's a different system. Different system. With Greg Williams and right. Rob Ryan. But, it, but similar. 
Yeah, and uh, he, he can attack. I know mm -hmm. he can he can uh, get the sacks. I like his, uh, his uh, celebration dance where he did the mm -hmm. you're out of your mind after a big play. So I uh, look forward to seeing that again. But yeah, th I guess with Danilo Irby, that's going to be that's going to hurt if he's not right, playing because right. he's had a strong yeah. season so far. He's forced some turnovers. Right. He, uh, he's felt real comfortable in this uh, defense, uh, unlike what he was in, in, in Miami. I mean, this defense kind of mirrors a little bit what, what they're doing in Baltimore. And Elby's come in, and he's been a big reason why this team defense has turned around. Yeah, and I think we, when I say we, Carl and I have seen him progress week to week, and we've seen him um, in the beginning of the season. And you, you kind of like. He's one of those guys you put point a finger like he's gonna make he's gonna make some kind of impact on this team. Yes. Guys, let's shift to the Pelicans. We'll go to the phone lines in, in just a moment. I'll tell you what, let's go to the phone lines, then then we'll shift to the Pelicans. We got some callers that, that have been waiting to get in. Wallace is in New Orleans. Wallace, welcome. You're on inside New Orleans Sports. Oh, yeah. Hey Wallace. Uh, my question is about the Pelicans, man. It's coach Jeffrey, whatever the name is. Uh, I don't think uh he's a good coach for the way high the Pelicans was playing last year with the other coach because, man, you see how Anthony Davis playing? He, this system ain't good for them. You know, I, I, don't, I don't like this system at all. You know, what it's supposed to be, run and shoot? I, I, I can't see this. We're not going to never win a game playing like that. We got to get rid of that coach, man. And I'll sit back and well, Wallace, thanks for the phone. A little, little bit early to let go of the guy who's only been Woo! in two games. Two games in. We got 80 to go. Whoa. <laughs> but pump, the, pump the break. Pump the break. I do think <laughs> that, that, that and, and I mentioned as well on the radio show, uh, I, right now, while they don't have their full comma of players, I, I do question having AD on, on a three-point line, corner three-point line. He needs to be a little bit closer to the basket. Uh, Garland, take you first. I mean, I, you know, I just think this is a work in progress when, you, when you're playing so many guys that – Honestly, once you get healthy, they're not going to be on the court. Well, we, Alvin did say in the preseason that he was going to have uh, Anthony shoot more threes, but this is not their team. Obviously on offense right now, they can't push it full speed because they have no Tyreek Evans right now, which is one of those guys going to be pushing it. Drew Holiday is on a minute restrictions of only playing 15 to 20 minutes a game, and he can't play in a back-to-back, -back, so that's why they held him out against Golden State and he played against uh, the Trailblazers. Uh, this is, I mean, Ish Smith. I mean, Nate Robinson, they, were, they let go of Nate today. Uh, he did nothing for the team in the two games. I mean, Ish passed him. I mean, Nate got, the, Nate got some run uh, in the first game, mm -hmm. and they finally figured out that he, he's not the guy, that Nate ran third string. I think it's way too early to get too excited about this team. Ajins is finally getting back in the flow. Ashik is out. Luke Babbitt's going to be um, a, a guy who's going to shoot a lot more threes on the outside. He's going to take some of those Anthony Davis threes away. They only had nine healthy guys against yeah. Golden State. I'm not, I'm not going to freak out yet. It's two games in. Yes, I was promised a high-speed offense. that They're going to put up 110 a game. I thought the defense is going to be more intense. They let open a lot of big-time threes. C.J. McCollum killed them last mm -hmm. night. Steph Curry did it the night before. Uh, so I'm not seeing on defense right now. They're not getting over. They're not shifting over the three-point line mm -hmm. uh, to, to defend against these guys. Uh, McCollum had way too many wide-open uh, threes. Uh, last night so right now you're not seeing the team that we're going to see in January once Tyreek's back and all these guys are healthy I think you're going to see a different team Robert, I'm going to hold my comments until right. possibly close to the all-star break because um, I looked at this team and you know when they said hey Anthony's going to shoot more threes and you're like you look and like this guy's this guy right here is going to shoot yeah. more threes right. I mean you have Ryan Anderson I mean he should shoot lights out granted right. maybe you know not as much as he used to because of the back injury mm -hmm. but you're going to have your star player do everything. Right. Away from the basket. Away where, where from the basket. Dominating. Right. And, um, you know, Charles Barkley made a, a, a good prediction, a good statement at halftime against the Golden State game. He's going against Green. Green's a chair. He should be going straight yes. into Green over, he should be going for two points mm -hmm. over the basket, not yeah. going for three. No right. jumpers like that. Agreed. Just go straight to him because Green was not guarding him well. Well, and, and look, it's part of the problem. It's hard to judge him right now. I mean, again, the system, uh, we'll see how that's going to shake out. But I will say this, and I think I, I mentioned it to you in, in the green room, Garland. Um, defense, rebounding is about effort. And when you got guys that are one step from the D League, I'm sorry. Yeah. These guys need to give more effort. At the end of the day, they may not be as talented as, as, the, as, the, as the guys they're going against, but you can show effort. Uh, we didn't see, again, guys crashing the boards. We didn't see guys running to put a hand in, 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 in shooters' faces. I mean, that to me was, was the biggest problem that I saw over the last two games. Now, we saw a little less of that in the fourth quarter of the Portland game, and that's got to carry over to Golden State at home. But, 
I mean, again, anybody that's played the game, anybody that's coached the game, anybody that's watched the game, effort is, is, is rebounding and defense. And, and that's the one thing that, that really has been, I've been taken back at is watching this team early. Yeah, they've been out of sync. Some, uh, Wesley said last night he thought they looked a little tired. It's game two. If you're tired in game two, what are you going to do in game 80? Okay? Mm -hmm. But defense and rebounding are, 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 are things that they can do right now with a little more effort. Well, in the David's point, saying they were tired, uh, they did play what only nine guys the mm -hmm. night before. True. So True. I know that those back-to-backs are killers, and I think Portland has a crazy stat. They've won 13 straight home openers in the NBA, which is a pretty good stat that I heard last night on NBA Game Time. Uh, I, I'm just let's, let's give them Saturday. Let's see how everything you know, home crowd right. behind them. You know, those West Coast road trips are always brutal. I, I can't recall the Pelicans ever having a successful road trip. Uh, where they've gone over 500, especially when you're playing. Now, if you play in a road trip where you play the Lakers and the mm -hmm. Utah Jazz, right. that's a much better. <laughs> that's right. a, I watched the Jazz, uh, the uh, sorry, the Lakers, uh, Timberwolves game last night. The Lakers and the Timberwolves are not good teams. Yeah. You know, Robert, we also got, almost got to do like the Saints, take it a quarter at a time. I'm mean, yeah. used to take the season a quarter at a time until everybody gets healthy and then see where you are. Look, I've been very critical of this organization right. for trying to stand pat, hoping and praying that again you're going to be healthy. When when again you look at the the tail of the tape of the players they've had on this roster. They have not been healthy consistently. So now all of a sudden you say you're going to bring in a new system, a new coach, and, and everything's going to turn around in, in a system that is more demanding on your body. So, I mean, I think it's a real roll of the dice for this team right now to say that you're going to bring back your full complement of players. We could see a mass unit in and out all season long. Kendrick Perkins. When they picked up Kendrick Perkins and then I was watching the oh. game, I, I swear, I think he just went down the court and he was already tired. He was already sweating. And he was just huffing and puffing. And my buddy looked at me and goes, is he going to last in this kind of high tempo no. what Gentry wants? And, and he's probably their most prolific score inside right now. Right. Yeah, it was, what, one or two, <laughs> I think he has two missed shots in yeah, two games. On. And yeah. then, like, he, he's just out of breath. Right. And, and, and he's lost weight. Right. He's a little bit lighter on his feet. I mean, you go look look at, at game film of him the last couple of years. There's not a lot of it, but there's a lot of him on the bench, and he's not the kind of shape he is right now. So, and then you got to look. I mean, you're going to have a, a sheet coming back. You got a Jensen. These are both big guys, kind of lumbering. You know, are they going to be able to fit in? So, you know, I think it's a work in progress. And I think, much like we saw with the Saints team, where they had to get guys back, guys had to get acclimated to the system. Let's take it a quarter at a time. But I do think that, again, the front office will be judged on what's going on with this team, on the health of this team going forward, because they knew going in that they didn't have a healthy team in the past. What led them to believe that all of a sudden that they were going to wave a magic wand and this team was going to be healthy for 82 games or even, let's say, 50 to 60 of those 82 games? Yeah, uh, more of Tyreek Evans and Luke Babbitt and less Alonzo G. Yes. And uh, Ish Smith. Ish Smith. I, I, Ish, is, Ish uh, is, looks like he's out of control sometimes running down that court. He made some bad passes. Obviously, that reverse dunk he gave up to AD was pretty sweet. But uh, you're not going to see some of these guys on the court come January. So I wouldn't. Uh, yes, the season, it, 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 when it comes to the, the seventh or eighth seed, you don't want the eighth seed because you're going to Golden State in the first round of the playoffs. So you, you do not like this start. But a lot of big teams, lost, I mean, it's the first game. Yeah. I mean, the Rockets lost last night. The Grizzlies got smoked at home last night. Uh, the Spurs lost at OKC. So there, there's a lot of teams that have a loss already. The Mavericks are the only team that have a win right now in the uh, Southwest Conference, and they beat a, a, a Suns team. If they're pushing 30 wins in a year, I'd be surprised. Well, Ish Smith will, will join Nate Robinson and Sioux City, you know, <laughs> in, in a couple weeks once, once again, players get healthy. Back to the phone lines we go. 866-3200. Uh, Brian is in Metairie. Brian, welcome. You're on Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. How y'all doing tonight? Great, Brian. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Your, your, your question or comment? Okay, I got two comments real quick. I'm going to try and get them out real quick for you. Uh, first off, I'm a Saints fan. I'll be a Saints fan until the day I die. But I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. This is still a bad team to me. They beat two bad teams. you got to realize, I mean, I'm not nowhere even believing. It's not like they stole the world by the teams they won. Uh, I, think they got, I think they have looked better. I'm going to give them that. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's just living proof that any team can lose on any given day. The Saints are proving that. And I think they're going to prove that this season. But I'm going to say, like Jim Marler said, playoffs? you got to be kidding me. Saying playoffs on a show right now, I don't believe it. Uh, I'm from Missouri. You'd have to show me. <laughs> Secondly, and this is just my personal opinion, I don't think that taking a team to North Carolina in 50 degrees to train does anything to get them ready for this heat. 
a preseason or regular season. I think that's pampering them. I think they have a perfectly good facility on Airline Highway. Why do they have to pay that money to go to North Carolina where it's 52 degrees and a butterfly is a butterfly? And, I mean, the grown men get paid big money. And I don't want to see them go to North Carolina. They, they, there's nothing wrong with their facility on Airline Highway. And I think that's a part of their conditioning problem. Brian? That's just my personal opinion. Thank you for I'm the phone call. And, and, and by the way, it, it is West Virginia. Yeah. But, not, I, but I, we get the point. You we get, get the, the point. point. Yeah, North Carolina has some mountainous uh, terrain there. Yeah. They can get up to in the 50s degrees at Asheville. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's a big thing this preseason. And it looks like it's the curse of the rebar because the, the Pelicans, the Pelicans yeah. are up there for four days. Uh, luckily, Bobbio and I haven't gotten injured, right. you know, when we came back from uh, Greenbrier because because all the players for both teams uh, come back with a lot of injuries. What did Arizona injuries. do, by the way? The Arizona trained at the Greenbrier before right. they played Pittsburgh. I forgot how that yeah. ended up. Yeah, they, they Arizona uh, won that game. So uh, so that's the only – They've broken the curse. They broke yeah. It. But, no, I think the Greenbrier, you're right. The Greenbrier, it's just it's just to get away from yeah. a lot. Because you know, there, there was – granted, there's no fans. There was no. just a handful, mm -hmm. and I think that's just the surrounding area. Um, that's that's pretty much probably what it was. But yeah, I think you need to come down to where the heat, the humidity, because that seemed like it worked um, when they ro raised a trophy up in the yes, that's, in Miami, you're right. Florida. You're right. That was how they started it all off, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, they'll be there for a couple more years, guys. Uh, yeah, there's one a, year there's, left. There's, one more there's, year. there's a there's a love affair there. Yeah, for we some asked reason. we asked Sean Payton the last day of training camp. And he said, we're going to start working on a new contract. Uh, obviously, the Pelicans want to come back mm -hmm. there. So uh, Jim Justice, who owns the uh, Greenbrier, he has a great relationship with uh, the Saints and the Pelicans. But Jim Johnson did tell us right before the first practice that there's 15 other NFL teams that would line up right away to take that position. And then I, I guarantee every Saints fan listens right now goes, good. Take one of those other 15 teams right now because I don't want the Saints to go away anymore. I don't want to go to Millsaps ever again, though, either. Right. I almost died down right. there. That that was some brutal that was weather. Some brutal heat, huh? And they you know what? They don't have an indoor practice facility in Millsaps, right. so that'll never happen again. You need an indoor facility. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the uh, spaces are limited, uh, especially if you can go in the south because they need an indoor facility. Greg is in Homa. Greg, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Greg. Hey, uh yeah, I got kind of a, a statement to see you guys' opinion on this. Sure. Do y'all feel that Sean Payton's play calling is kind of back resembling in 09 because we didn't have really any stars and that now he's just calling plays for anybody. Whoever's number comes up, we're going to call it. And that way maybe the defenses don't have anybody to target. And I'll hang up and listen. Thank you, Greg. Guys, Robert, why don't you take it first? Well, I'm just one play that I'm glad that he's not running constantly is the Superdome special. And that's mm -hmm. that reverse. reverse. <laughs> yeah. It'll uh, happen this weekend now. But go uh, ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I <laughs> guess it's going to happen. But um, some plays kind of resemble 09, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm sure that Peyton and them have also saw the, who they have and utilized the mm -hmm. Brandy Cooks uh, pass. I don't think we've seen, I don't think we've seen anything similar to that. Maybe a Devin, uh, Devery Henderson mm -hmm. back in the day, but um, but we, we've we've seen more. We talked about it earlier. We've seen more of an aggressive play calling though right. the last few weeks that they resemble 09, 11, right? Yeah, right. yeah. And they got. And, I mean, you know, CJ could be your Reggie Bush. You know, it could be. I'm waiting on it. Yeah. Uh, now Jeremy Shockey. Uh, you know, I, there's no one ever compared to him. I don't think Ben Watson or any of those right. guys. But you know, Lance Moore was hot on that 09 mm -hmm. team. Marcus Colston was a rock on that 09 yes. team. Uh, they definitely have uh, – uh, the, the line was really strong in the 19 yeah. team, and that yeah. line is finally uh, healthy uh, in 2015, so you could definitely see some similarities. I recall they had a running back problem in 2009. Uh, I mean, the, the, the running backs weren't as strong uh, top to bottom. They didn't have a Mark Ingram in that 09 yeah, team. They did it by committee. Yeah, they did it by committee. Right. And they still got it now, but you got Ingram, Spiller, and uh, Kyrie Robinson. Yeah. I'll take that over the 09 team at the running back spot. But uh, Drew Brees is obviously he's not the same Drew Brees as he was six years ago. But he's not bad. No, no. <laughs> you take that. You take him. Now I will say that defense was uh, right. was uh, it was pretty aggressive in 09. Very, very opportunistic, no doubt about it. Which is one of the reasons why they won the Super Bowl. Roland is in New Orleans. Roland, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, Roland. Good, good evening, guys. Good I evening. have one question about the Pelicans. Sure. Do the Pelicans have enough money to bring in another good player to go along with Anthony Davis? And I'll hang up and listen. Th thank you, Roland. Well, you have uh, you have multiple players coming off the books next next year. You have obviously Eric Gordon, 
You, know, you have Ryan Anderson, and you have a few other players that, that again, will have a, they have an opportunity to do that. So uh, the cap will go up tremendously next year from what we understand. So, yes, they will have the money to do that. Uh, the question is, again, how do you um, woo those players to play in New Orleans? Anthony Davis is going to have to do some politicking. Yeah, and Rhino, uh, I, I don't know if he was alluding to this season, but, yeah, Rhino could be a bargaining chip at the right. end of this year right. uh, if they're making that playoff run. Um, he looked better last night. Yes. He didn't do too much against Golden State in uh, the first game. Mm -hmm. Eric Gordon is coming off the books next year, but you want to keep him. He's your starter uh, at the uh, two spot. But, um, yeah. Just not at the big number. Yeah, no, no. A but, significantly <laughs> less number. Yeah, they have a lot of guys, though, that it could be good trade bait. Mm -hmm. You get Perkins is on a one-year yep. deal. You know, to kind of throw ins yes. at the end to sure. make a deal work. Uh, so the Pelicans can, can you know, roll the dice there, and uh, we'll see. I mean, He's dealing Dell. Right. He's going to make a move. This team is this team right now. Obviously, Ish Smith just signed mm -hmm. him. Alonzo G. Uh, this will not be the same team at the end of the year. I guarantee. I can put it out there that Dell Demps will probably make right. a trade this year. He right. does it every year. Well, I, I, I think by the. I really believe by the trading deadline, we'll see a shift in this lineup, especially if guys are not coming back healthy. That's right. I mean, Garland's right. I mean, by the time, the end of the year, you're going to be like Anthony Davis, Eric Gordon, and then these other players that we got right. from deals yeah and then uh, and and next year again you will have a chance to be able to get one of the one of the top players that are going to be on the market and the question is you know who will it be and uh you know who's uh, what what position it will be as well honestly and i forgot to point out quincy pondex that's another right. big piece he's yeah. coming at the end of november he was a huge reason why the pelicans made the playoffs mm -hmm. last year he'll start over yeah, dante cunningham, cunningham. As well. yeah and, and you know cunningham's uh mm -hmm. when you got pound dexter and cunningham back uh going off each other uh splitting those minutes right you know cunningham's playing a lot of minutes so far yeah. took a brutal hit uh to the head already on this road trip uh, yeah, so they got a lot of guys come back. I mean, you get Babbitt and you get P Pond Extra. I know people are like, you know, who cares? But in this new pushed-up system mm -hmm. where they're running, running and gunning, right. those guys are going to be shooting a lot of threes. Yes, no doubt. David is a Marrero. David, welcome to Inside New Orleans Sports. Hey, David. How you doing, man? Doing great. Thanks for yeah. the call. Yeah, my, my, my question was, yo, you know, you know, this is what I think. You know, I think, do you think the Saints need to uh, maybe go to, like, a hurry-up offense? Mm -hmm. You know, because I noticed when they're in that two-minute offense, they can move that ball quick and move it up and down, up and down that field, you know. And I was wondering, you know, if y'all think they might have to try to experiment doing the same thing, go to, like, a hurry-up offense, certainly like how Philadelphia does, you know, yes. goes to that David, th offense. Th thank you for the phone call. Guys, we saw, at least in the beginning of the season, them trying to stay on the field offensively to take the pressure off the defense. If they play with a little bit of a lead, all of a sudden you don't feel like praise taking the pressure off the defense. Uh, Robert, what do you think about maybe a little bit of a change in the offense? Well, I don't know. Like, it, 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 it does work in Philadelphia. But I think Sean Payton has a rhythm and has a set plays that he wants to do in, in order. I don't think the hurry up or anything like that, I don't think that's also a Drew Brees mm -hmm. kind of deal. I don't think that's him. And with the Eagles, they keep the same guys out on the field for yeah. when they're yes. doing it. Sean has so many different packages, right. so many players. He has so many chess yeah. pieces. I don't think that would work because you need to sub out, which the other team can sub out also yes. when you sub out. I just think he has too many players that he uses, so that wouldn't work. Philadelphia it works because most of the players stay on the field the entire drive. I don't think Sean will with, with the uh, packages yeah. he uses. L let's shift gears, talk a little LSU. Uh, Tigers get a uh, win over uh, West, uh, Western Kentucky, 48-20. Uh, to 20. I don't really don't want to go into that as much as I want to look forward right. to what's going to happen next week. Colin, you made an interesting point uh, a little bit earlier on, on where you think the Tigers will be in the polls next week. Yeah, the college football uh, playoff committee meets this weekend. Uh, their first rankings come out on Tuesday, four days before the LSU-Bama big game. Now, LSU uh, and Bama are in the top 10 in the AP poll, but if you look at it and you look at the teams in the top six, uh, Clemson has a win over Notre Dame as a top 10 team. Uh, Michigan State has one win against Michigan off a fluky uh, punt return uh, that went bad. LSU has two wins against top 25 teams in Mississippi State, which was on the road. Uh, a, a very impressive win. They beat Florida at home. That game was a little tighter. Uh, Treon Harris had a, had a good game for Florida. But that's two top 25 wins. Ohio State has none. Baylor has none. And Baylor's playing with their backup quarterback. I don't know how many weeks it's going to be. TCU plays a tough team uh, this week in West Virginia. They've had no impressive wins. Uh, a, a bad ball at Texas Tech in Lubbock uh, got them a win there. I think LSU, when this polls come out, the college football rankings come yes. out next Tuesday, they're going to be number one, which is going to make this much more exciting. <laughs> right. I mean, we're not talking game of the century. Right. 
because I don't want to say game of the century because I can't handle another nine to six game. No. I mean, obviously it was a fun atmosphere, uh, but I can't handle nine to six. I think there's gonna be a little more points this year, especially when I think Brandon Harris has more confidence in his passing game. The guys are finally catching the ball now. You know, Trayvon Durrell had a lot of drops mm -hmm. early in the season. Uh, Trey Quinn, uh, Tyron Johnson, those guys are starting to get a little more confidence. So I think there's gonna be a little more uh, more offense in this game yeah. this time around than the game of the century. But uh, yeah, LSU is probably gonna be number one in that uh, ranking, which will make it much more exciting. Robert, you concur? Yes. And Oh, just before I say anything, I don't have tickets. I don't have tickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, that's for your family back in Alabama and, and, and folks here, right? That's right. That's right. Um, no, but the offense, you know, watching Brandon Harris throw in the rain. Yes. 286 yards. Um, I was there Saturday, and it was mm -hmm. coming down pregame, like even to the point where the water was just, uh, it was flooding the field. And to, for Harris to do that in the rain, I can just imagine if he's, just now getting his rhythm and getting his receivers, especially to Malachi Dupree, which was just an unbelievable catch yes. in the beginning. If it's dry, I hope I haven't, you know, I'm not a weather forecaster, sure. we're just sports guys, yeah. so we can't predict the weather. Um, but if it's dry, Saturday night, Brian Denny Stadium, it's gonna get nuts. Yeah. And if he has the if same game like he did West Kentucky and then more yards, mm -hmm. it's gonna be, it's just, just bombs. Right. Uh, in the last three games, Harris has completed 42 of 67 percent of his passes, uh, 67 passes, 63 percent, 7 of 16 yards, seven touchdowns. Here's the deal: no interceptions this no, year. No, no interceptions. And and I can tell you right now, uh, I don't need uh, Les Miles doesn't mean need me to tell him that there's going to be eight and nine men in a box. Absolutely. Brandon Harris is going to have a chance to go for like 300 yards in this game because they're going to stack the box to, to stop. Uh, Leonard Fournette, yep. Daryl Williams, mm -hmm. Darius Geis. I know Brissett hadn't played a lot this season. Uh, those are three dynamic running backs. Uh, they're going to try to uh, pound it. I guarantee the first drive of the game, it's going to be Leonard Fournette on first down, Leonard Fournette on second down, <laughs> Leonard Fournette on third down, a, a, unless it's third and ten. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's going to get a shot. Yep. The, the, the puts some big yards, and Traven Durrell and Malachi Dupree are two of the most dangerous wide receivers, I think, in the country now. They had some drops early in the season, uh, disappointing games, but now that uh, they've gotten that confidence, that Western Kentucky game, I remember there was an out route that Malachi Dupree caught uh, right right by the pylon, Fournette score on the next play. That was a perfect pitch and catch between the two. You know, uh, one thing I liked about Fournette's game last week, uh, Bobby, was uh, the fact that he didn't get the big runs, but you saw him grind it out in, 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 in very wet conditions. You know, again, for West Kentucky, it was the perfect storm, no pun intended, because they really kind of uh, tempered the Tigers' speed, you know, mm -hmm. kind of slowed them down a bit. But you saw Fournette, again, grinding it out. And, you know, that's what he's going to see when you go through this murderous row of November. It's not going to be, you know, he'll be able to get some long runs, yes, but most of the time, not in the box, SEC defenses, it's going to be a grind. It's going to be some ugly runs out there. Yeah, and ball security. Yes. He's, he, because, you know, there's going to be guys pitching poking the ball mm -hmm. trying to do everything they can to try to get that key turnover so that also was a key factor for him against Western Kentucky slippery ball still even though it was Western Kentucky they were still were trying to jab poke yes. everything they could do even poke his eyes I believe um, ball security is going to play a big interest you know the other thing is I think the tight end and special teams are going to play a big role in this game because they're going to rely on Fournette everybody's going to be keying on Fournette Fournette yes. But you have to understand, Jeter, yes. Colin Jeter, I mean, he's made some catches. Mm -hmm. He's made some key catches to set up those touchdowns. I think he might be a factor. And special teams, I don't think we're going to see trick plays. I don't think Miles is mm -hmm. going to do that. But we've seen this before in Tuscaloosa where it's come down to a kick. Yes. Well, and Domingue had missed a kick all year. Right. And now they got Dante Jackson, mm -hmm. Riverdale alone. Right. He, he's, he took over the uh, punt return dues. Mm -hmm. Tredavious White no longer has those. Yes. So uh, he's, man, he's, Dante Jackson's right. fantastic to watch. <laughs> Well, guys, you kind of lead me to my to my next uh, point, and it is the, if there's a question mark on this team right now, it's the play of the secondary, and it's the special teams. Uh, how much can they clean that up if schematically, uh, with with again bodies, whatever they have to do? Uh, again, little margin for error in the month of November. Yeah, in Alabama, uh, that's the reason they lost against Ole Miss was uh, was fumbling the ball on uh, kick returns. Uh, so they don't have a strong special teams either. Their kicker is not is one of the weaker ones in the SEC. Uh, Griffith. So uh, special teams, 
Uh, kick returns for LSU has been one of their major weaknesses this year uh, in punt returns. Uh, Tredavis White out of there now helps uh, LSU because I just think Tredavis White shouldn't have been back there in the first place. Yes, he had a big return against what, Syracuse. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a big play, but uh, against Florida, that was inexplicable. Jackson they, they, had such great speed. Yeah, I just don't understand why he was trying to mm -hmm. swat at the ball in the first place. When that rolls like that, mm -hmm. just let it go, especially in a game against Florida. That's a big one. Uh, that, that's probably yeah. going to be the difference. I mean, LSU in the game of the century was three field mm -hmm. goals that won the game for him. Right. LSU's always had strong kickers. I, I can't believe that Domang uh, only picked up football his junior year at St. Paul's, mm -hmm. uh, never touched the ball his entire life until that fake uh, field goal. Uh, that's not going to happen again uh, with yeah. Domang. But, uh, <laughs> but it, 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 there's some maybe a punt return. You never punt play, you know. Maybe the – Though I guarantee Jamie King would probably throw it further and he could punt it this year because Jamie King's had an awful yeah, year punting struggled. the ball. He really has. Robert, what, what about the, the secondary? Uh, again, uh, uh, Mills comes back. I mean, we'll see a little bit more of him. You know, at times, Jefferson's been lost. He's been oh, pancake. Yeah. Paris played a lot last week. He showed some flashes, but again, we just, again, showed also the lack of experience. Uh, you know, for all of a sudden, DBU, they're kind of ordinary back there right now. That's right. And you know what? We talked about this. They purposely have this week off before the Bama game, both teams. And I'm pretty sure that DBU is going to try to come back. Like those DBs have probably been sent there on film, watching the film over and over. And they probably have already gone out to the indoor or outdoor mm -hmm. practice facility this past week. They're going to be practicing everything they learn because they, I mean, that that's where, like I said, that's where that it's going to come down to that. And then Jeter and the special teams for right. this game. Do you, do you guys anticipate maybe uh, pairing it down a little bit in terms of, of, the, of the secondary, playing maybe more man-to-man, -man, less zone? You know, they seem to be able to get be, be getting confused, again, uh, when they're in the zone defense, uh, certain reads they have. You know, uh, you know, stick these guys like Tolliver man-to-man and tell them go play football. Yeah, and I think uh, the other thing that's going to help uh, LSU is that this is one of the probably the weakest receiving cores Alabama's had, True. one of the weakest quarterbacks they've ever had in Jay Coker. I think that's going to help out this week with uh, – uh, Dowdy last week for West Kentucky is one of the better quarterbacks in the not only in uh, his conference USA but I think in the country. Uh, Jay Coker, we still don't know what we have with him. Yeah. He, he he has some major question marks. Their backup quarterback is not good at all for Alabama. The receiving core is weak. Uh, amen. Mary Cooper's out of there because he was running circles around LSU. Uh, the tight end for Alabama, I don't understand why they don't get that guy more involved. OJ, I can't, OJ's last name uh, escapes me right now. Uh, he had a huge catch against LSU two years ago that hurt him really bad. Uh, so uh, maybe that tight end, but the receiving core doesn't put any right. sc scare in you at all. Right, but they got a guy in that backfield that puts a little bit of scare oh, in Henry. <laughs> yeah. That's what I would love to see. Yeah. Those two go four net. Yeah, they, that's, it's going to be awesome. All right, guys, what do you all think about uh, – First of all, against the, the Tigers against Alabama, uh, in what, in a week from Saturday? Oh, boy. You, you want a prediction here? I'd like one. Ooh, oh. Now, I will say this. At, pre, <laughs> at the beginning of the season, this is crazy, and I got a lot of heat for this. I said LSU was going to lose one game at Alabama and still go to the national championship. I think now with all the, the teams uh, in front of them, mm -hmm. I don't think if LSU, whoever loses this game, is probably out of the national title race. Yes. It's going to be tough. It's so for, late. Yeah, it's, it's going to be late this season. Whew. You know what? LSU does well on the road. I, I think they really do. I just, you know what? I, I think Jay Coker um, just isn't uh, up to snuff in this game. You know what? I'm going to go upset here. I'm going to say uh, 20 to 17 LSU. This is no homerism. Right. I've just watched a lot of Alabama games this year. I've watched a lot of LSU games this year. Uh, Tennessee last week uh, looked really strong against Alabama. I just think that that this team, I think Brandon Harris is going to be the key. And I think he's finally got the comments. You know, I'm going to go, I'm going to LSU. I'm doing it. 2017. Robert? Cool. 24-21, and the kid from St. Paul's High School is going to be the hero. Wow. And he's from Alabama, yeah. so yeah. there you yeah. go. That's yeah. right there. I got, I got about 15 <laughs> seconds left. Saints win? Saints, oh, yeah, this week against the Giants. They, I think they go on a win streak. I mean, they're already on one. I think they're going to get. I think they're going to beat the Titans, and they're going to beat the Redskins. They're going to win five in a row. I know that's going to be crazy. I'm, I'm going crazy He's predictions going crazy tonight. Predictions tonight. Yeah. Saints win. Saints win. Beautiful. <laughs> Robert O'Shields of ABC 26, Garland Gillen of Fox 8. Thanks so much for being with us here on Inside New Orleans Sports. Remember, uh, you can uh, check us out each and every Friday night for a rebroadcast right here on WLAE at 10 p.m. Also on Pelican Sports Television every Friday night at 9 p.m. in the New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and Lafayette markets. Uh, you can catch me on the radio, 990 a.m. WGSO, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. weekdays. Or uh, you catch us on the TuneIn Radio app at ericasher.com. And also don't forget, folks, uh, at Legacy Kitchen every Monday night, myself and Saints Hall of Famer Tyrone Hughes, 7 to 8 on WGSO Radio. Come on out and join us for the live 
live broadcast. We talk Saints, LSU, Tulane, and Pelicans. We'd love to see you. Again, special thanks to our guests, Robert O'Shields and Garland Gillen. Also to the WLE production staff, including Ron Yeager, Jim Dotson, John, Donovan Joseph, Kenny Juno, Philip Williamson, Richard King, and my director, William Hill. Thanks so much for watching Inside New Orleans Sports. We'll see you right back here next week. Have a great week. My name is Eric Asher. Good evening. Inside New Orleans Sports with Eric Asher is the first place award winner of the 2015 New Orleans Press Club's Excellence in Journalism Award for the category of Best TV Sports Show.